Good Tuesday morning. I looked at my watch and it's only 39 degrees outside, so I'm not going out to the lake. I'm going to do my devotion sitting right here in a chair. Matthew chapter 17. When they came to Capernaum, the collectors of the two drachma tax went up to Peter and said, Does your teacher not pay the tax? And he said, Yes. When they came into the house, Jesus spoke to him first, saying, What do you think, Simon? From whom do the kings of the earth take toll or tax? From their sons or from others? And when he said, from others, Jesus said to him, Then the sons are free. However, do not give offense to them. Go to the sea, cast a hook, take the fish that comes up, and when you open its mouth, you'll find a shekel. Take that and give it to them for me and for yourself. All adults paid that half shekel yearly tax for an expense of temple service. Exodus 30 makes clear that that payment was originally made only when the people were numbered. It was called a ransom for souls. The same sum was paid by all rich and poor alike to show that the soul of the rich and the soul of the poor are of equal value in the sight of God. When asked, Peter just assumed the master was so zealous for the honor of the temple that he would gladly pay the temple dues. And when Peter came to Jesus, Jesus knew what had happened and, and he he drew out of Peter the acknowledgement that the kings of the earth take tribute from their subjects, but not from their children. The children are free. The inference was a reflection on Peter's earlier confession that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God. As the Messiah, he was under no obligation to pay the customary dues for the maintenance of the temple. He was the eternal Son of God. Christ was greater than the temple. He himself was the temple of God in the fullest, holiest sense. Seems all this <laughs> Peter had forgotten. Jesus was clearly exempt from the ransom of souls, but he paid it to avoid wounding conscience. It was right for Israelites to maintain the temple service. It is also right for Christians to freely give cheerfully for the support of the church. It would have caused such an offense to the people of Capernaum who knew Jesus so well if he refused to contribute to such a sacred purpose. They wouldn't understand what Peter understood through his intimate relationship with the Messiah. They would simply suppose that this famous teacher declined to pay the temple tax because he thought he was better than everyone else. This was not a hill worth dying on as it would only start idle and malicious talk. The Lord paid the tax even though he was exempt. He is here, as always, an example to you and I. He's our greatest example. We, we must choose our battles wisely. We must be careful not to do things which, though may be lawful in themselves, may lead others astray. We must not stand upon our rights when to do so might be misunderstood and might wound the conscience of weak believers. We must give willingly, not, not only to the poor, but to the work of the Church of Jesus. The half shekel paid annually for the service of the temple was regarded as given to God, and so are the gifts we give now. We give them in faith and we give them in love. We can learn a lot about humility from Jesus. He came to be baptized, though he was without sin. He paid temple dues, the ransom for souls, though he was a ransom for many. Lord, you said that if you set us free, we are free indeed. And yet you teach us to humbly submit as an example to others. Help me today to demonstrate humility to draw others to you. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.